How much weight can a spider web actually hold? Obviously, they hold flies, but what about a pen? A water bottle? A dumbbell? Well, I went out and bought the spider that makes the strongest webs in the world to be able to go and test it. And without wasting any time, I let the spider loose into this massive enclosure with tons of anchor points all over the wall to ensure an enormous web could be built in here. You see, these are called golden silk or weavers, and their silk is so strong that it's said that the military literally studied it to learn how to make bulletproof vests. Yeah. These guys are the real deal. So while we wait for this massive web to be constructed, I also want to test questions like what is the coolest spider species? Can spiders walk on water? And tons of other fun spider questions, starting with what is a trapdoor spider? Basically, the answer is that they're one of the most insane animals you'll ever see. And I instantly dropped it into a little enclosure I built for it. You see, they're called trapdoor spiders because they build a trapdoors. Basically, over the course of a few hours, they dig out a hole in the ground. Then they come the inside of that hole with a special kind of silk they produce that allows it to essentially turn into a functional trapdoor that they can surprise prey with. And while I wasn't able to catch mine building the trapdoor, the next morning I came back to find this area looking pretty different. And based off of this suspicious moss and silk trip wires, I'm pretty sure the spider set up his trapdoor right here. So I suspect if I put a cricket in, the spider will jump out of the trapdoor to eat it. Immediately the cricket got to walking around. And this enclosure isn't super big, so it was wasn't long until the cricket was right next to the trap door. Now you see these silk lines. Like I said earlier, they are trip wires that are directly connected down to where the spider is located. So if something were to touch one of these trip wires, the spider would instantaneously know exactly where to strike. And well guys, it is insane to see this because like 20 seconds later, the cricket walked over the trap door onto the trip wire and the cricket is now just, it's just gone. Check out that instant replay. Oh my gosh. The fact that the spider is just born with the ability to know to do this is so insane. And if you thought that was cool, while we wait for our golden silk orb weaver to make the strongest web in the world, I still have way more fun spider questions with the next one being, can spiders walk on water? Yeah, you might be thinking, a heck no, Tara Green, are you stupid? If a spider walked on water, it, it would just fall in and drown. But I think I actually found a spider species that actually can walk on water. And I've heard they can also do tons of other crazy stuff. So I built it up the perfect environment with both a water and a land area to get this experiment started. Now, I very carefully let the spider loose because obviously, as you can tell, it's um, uh, extremely large and creepy. And while I have a whole channel about keeping the weirdest pets, I'm still kind of scared of spiders. <laughs> but eventually, the spider ended up crawling out of the container. All right, now that he's out of that container and on the land section, hopefully he now goes um, and walks in the water. Let me see if maybe I can move him over there. I don't want to. Oh, oh, oh. He's doing it. Yep, and just like that, the spider started to defy the laws of physics, kinda. I know it looks like the spider is just sort of floating on top of the water, but it actually has completely perfect control to be able to walk around on top just like it was solid ground. Yeah, it's actually insane, but these spiders are able to do this because of their legs, which are covered with these super tiny water repellent hairs that make them buoyant on top of the water. But these guys didn't just evolve to walk on the water for nothing. They did it so they could hunt where no other spider could. While most normal spiders just sit on a web all day waiting for the prey to come to them, these guys are active hunters and instead are able to pick up the slightest vibrations in the water to know exactly where the stuff is to attack it. So I want to see if this fishing spider will try and dive under the water for some crickets. This should be very interesting. I've heard crickets are these guys super favorite food, if that makes sense. I, yeah, they, they really like them though. Yeah, now I was going to try and take my time with this, but you see I accidentally dropped the cricket in and right away the fishing spider went insane and pounced on it without wasting a single second and the cricket was now just straight up in the fangs of this insane predator but i didn't really get a good view of it attacking the cricket so what i actually did was took the cricket from the spider so i could see if i could get the shot one more time and this time the spider once again pounced onto the cricket as soon as it saw it and obviously it's pretty creepy and you can see those legs moving it's very scary actually but you could see from under the water the cricket had no chance of escape and it was now getting eaten as the spider walked up on to the land to finish eating it there. All right, all right. I'm super excited about the next question because it is, what is the most camouflaged spider species? And well, guys, I think I found it. I got, it, it's, it's right in here. But before I could take it out of this container, I quickly built up its enclosure. And yep, literally all we need is just some sand. And that is it. These are one of the most resilient and simple spiders in the entire world. And let's open this. Now you may notice that I was being extremely ultra careful with opening this. And that's because 
this species is one of the most venomous creatures on the planet. Like, period. And if it bit me, there'd be a high likelihood I wouldn't make it. But thankfully, that didn't happen because the spider started to climb out of the paper towel and then onto the sand. Now, these are called six-eyed sand spiders. And you may be wondering, bruh, Theragreen, how the heck is this thing camouflaged at all? Well, you see, these guys are able to camouflage by doing this. Once they find a good spot where the sand is nice and loose, they start to kick sand on top of themselves and bury themselves under it to hide here for basically 99% of its life. Now, it may not technically be camouflage, but this ability does an amazing job at hiding it. And I mean, even its legs just look like tiny little sticks poking out the sand. This does not look like a spider. And like other predators that use their camouflage abilities to hunt, these spiders are no different. And as soon as they detect motion, they will jump out of the floor. So let's feed this thing a cricket. And yeah, it's pretty crazy. I mean, you would have no idea that that is literally one of the most venomous things in the world. Anyways, I went and dropped the cricket inside and immediately he got to running around the enclosure. Little did he know, right under his feet was his doom. Well, kinda, cause I thought right away the spider was gonna pop out, but the cricket actually was just straight up walking on top of the spider and the spider just didn't care. But I think it's cause this cricket was a little bit big for the spider. So a little bit later, I came back with a smaller cricket as you can see. And well, as you can also see, this time the spider did not waste a single second to pounce onto this cricket. Nah, look at this instant replay. Imagine if that was my finger. And well, I guess this spider is gonna enjoy his very tasty meal now. Nice. All right, now it's time for question number four, which is what spider is the most like Spider-Man? Yeah, it might sound funny, but the answer is definitely the thing in this container. Because you know how Spider-Man can shoot long-ranged webs out of his wrist? Well, this spider species can also shoot long-ranged webs and is pretty crazy. These are called long-legged spitting spiders. And as you can see, they look pretty weird because they have a massive head. You see, most spiders have their silk glands, which are the things that make silk, in their abdomen. And that's why that area is so big. But these guys got their silk glands in their head because they need to be able to shoot webs out of their mouth. But in order for them to be able to do that, they got to go and set up a little area in their tank. So I put my spider in a tank and he started to walk around, climbed up some sticks and stuff. And when I came back a little bit later, there was a little web made at the top of the enclosure. This means he was now settled in and he is ready to attack some prey. All right, now that the spider went and made a web somewhere at the top of the enclosure, I'm going to put in some crickets like always. And I know it's kind of a lot, but hopefully one of these guys gets shot by some webs. Let's go. So I put them in and while most of the crickets were kind of just walking around the grassy floor area, this one cricket started to climb up this stick that led directly to where the spitting spider was. The cricket then crawled right next to the spider, waking him up, which probably angered the spider, causing the spider to shoot his web directly onto the cricket, completely gluing him to the wall, making sure the cricket would never be able to move again. You see, not only does this web shot completely immobilize the prey, just like Spider-Man can do, but also because the web shots come from the head, it's infused with the spider's venom, meaning the web that's covering this cricket's body is seeping venom into it, which makes it even easier for the spider to consume it. And as you can see, that's exactly what the spider did. Very nice. Now the next question is, what is the cutest spider in the world? And yes, there is a good reason I'm testing this. You'll see what I mean. But anyways, I got the cutest spider right in here. They're called jumping spiders. And I mean, just look at them. While every other spider is easy, evil and just straight up nasty looking. These guys are super fluffy and they got all these little cute eyes, arms, and everything about them is just lovely. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. In fact, these spiders are so cute. They literally made an entire animated show about them called Lucas the Spider. And dang, this is pretty entertaining, but also it's not very accurate because if this is real, the spider would definitely be eating the fly. Because even though these guys are so cute, they're called jumping spiders because of their insane ability to jump towards prey and and eat them a whole. Yeah, they probably aren't so cute to the prey. So you already know, I got a little home built for this guy. I went and put him inside and I got out a cricket to feed him. Yeah, but this cricket is pretty big for the jumping spider. So if it's able to eat this thing, that'll just show how insane they are despite being super duper cute. Now what I did was immediately showed the jumping spider the cricket to let him know it was feeding time. And while I was showing it to him, you could see he was actually being pretty nice and wasn't just straight up attacking it. Actually was kind of backing off. So I decided to let the cricket loose and a little little later, I noticed the cricket was standing literally right next to the spider. And yeah, the jumping spider just wasn't eating it for some reason. Dang, maybe that little animation I was watching was accurate. And maybe jumping spiders are actually very friendly. Or maybe mine was just not hungry right now. 
Actually, that probably is what it is. But I think I'm just gonna leave that cricket in there so when the jumping spider gets hungry, it will do that, basically. Yeah, as you can tell in this footage, it's pretty cool to watch them eat. But anyways, the real reason why I wanted to get the cutest spider in the world is because many of you know that my mom is absolutely <laughs> petrified of spiders. <laughs> God. Yeah, one time I showed her a tarantula and she was just not happy. Matt? <laughs> so hopefully this will help change your mind. Mom, can you come in here? Yo, hello there. Hi, bud. So I just brought you in because I know you hate spiders, right? You yes. do hate spiders? Yes. So basically I just wanted to show you that I got the most venomous spider in the world. What? Yeah, right? No, I'm just kidding. It's the cutest spider in the world because I want to cure your fear of spiders. Oh my gosh. And as you can see, he's super friendly because he just, uh... Can crawl on my arm. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I can see its face and I can see like red furry. No. You want to get a closer no. look? No. And no, they're no. actually called jumping spiders no. because they're able to jump. No. So hopefully no, no. he doesn't no, jump no. on you. No, no. Right, I'm just going to go and put him back inside of his home. There you go. Okay, so did that cure your fear of spiders? Ooh, absolutely not. Oh. <laughs> Dang it. Well, I guess it was worth a shot. One day I will cure her fear of spiders. But anyways, now it's time to test the final question. How much weight can a spider web hold? So if you remember, I went and put that spider inside of this massive enclosure. And for me, that was about a week ago. And since putting the spider inside of here, all he's pretty much done is spun some web at the back left corner and the back right corner. And yeah, he hasn't made a massive web in the middle. You see, spiders that make massive webs like this can take weeks in captivity to feel comfortable enough to do it. Just because the environment is totally different from the wild. Now, I usually would just keep waiting, but I had a flight to catch in two days to record another banger video for you guys. So instead, to be able to answer this question, the next morning, I had to drive out to a trail bright and early in the morning to be able to find some spider webs in the wild myself. And guys, I brought the backpack so we can test a bunch of items in the spider webs to see what is the heaviest item they can hold. Now, after I found this first pretty tiny spider web, I got out the backpack to take out the lightest item to test the weight of crickets, which obviously Obviously, you can see this web is able to hold it just fine. Webs like this are literally designed to be able to hold insects. You see, even just this is impressive because if these spiders were scaled up to how big humans were, it'd basically be the equivalent to a human being able to make a web that could hold 125 pounds based on some complex math, which I'm not going to go into. All right, but we knew that was going to be able to hold a cricket. Our next item we got to test though is a $20 bell, which actually weighs double the amount as what a cricket weighs. And also it's a lot bigger. So let's see if a bigger web can hold this. Like I said, this web is a bit bigger and it should be able to hold this even though the weight is double the amount. And after kind of finding the right place to balance it, boom, just like that, the $20 looks like it's just floating there, but it's actually being held by the web. And when ranked on our human scalability, that money is the equivalent to a human making a web that could hold 250 pounds. We're getting heavier. But the next item is this empty pen casing, which is five times more heavy than that money. Now, if you're wondering how the web handled against this, well, you'd probably be surprised that it actually held with without too much of a problem at all. Meaning this is basically the equivalent to a human web holding over 1,000 pounds. Now we are getting heavy. And now the last item I've got is a water bottle, which is obviously a lot heavier and also a lot bigger than all the other stuff I've tested. And I know it's not a dumbbell, like I said at the start, but hey, I'm not trying to just destroy this web for no reason at all. Cause yeah, that would definitely destroy it. But yeah, let's test if this can hold the water bottle. Now with the pen and money already weighing this web down, it wasn't looking too promising, but I still tried my best to perfectly line the water bottle in the web so it would hold and uh, when i let go of the water bottle it fell apart but remember it was basically able to hold the human equivalent to 1000 pounds basically on my super accurate human scalability so yeah that's pretty crazy and the point of this video was to show you guys that while spiders can be super creepy and also super deadly they're actually some of the most interesting and amazing animals that we got to show our respect to and hopefully in this video i kind of showed you that because yeah there was just some crazy spiders in this video so guys if you want to watch another you can go click the video right to the left. And also, I know I'm always saying it, but go check out the Terra Green Activity book. Basically, spend a bunch of time making sure it's super fun, but also very educational, and it teaches you all about animals while giving you fun activities. All right, but anyways, bye-bye. Say bye, chat. Bye-bye.